Welcome back. So in the last video, we hooked up uh, the intervals and the chords right here. So when we click on the buttons, we get uh, the information about the intervals. And in this video, we're going to have a look at this one here. So we so we get the the notes off off the um, off the chord that we're clicking on down here. And we're going to use the transpose function that we get from uh, tonal. We tried to import that in an earlier video. Um, so I will, I'll try to just, let's only import transpose and play around with it a little bit just to review what we can do with it. Um, I am just going to make, before we do anything here, just make a little test here. So if you remember, we can use the transpose and then we can pass it two strings. Uh, the first string is the note that we need, that we want to transpose. And then the next one will be what we want to transpose it by. So let's say that we have a C3 right here. And that is the note that we want to transpose. Let's say we want to transpose it a perfect fifth. Then the next one, the next string we type in here is a perfect fifth. And then I will try to console lock this just to test it. In the parentheses here. And I can see I have an error already. Console, console. Console. Oh my goodness. That's better. And that has been transposed by a fifth, so it's up to G3. And uh, let's say that we have Let's say that we have an A3 and we want to transpose it the same amount, the same interval. Uh, I'm going to save it. Then I get an E4 because we automatically go, when we transpose an, an A in the third octave, we will get into the, the fourth octave if we transpose it by a perfect fifth. So that's what we're going to do here. We are going to take the, um, the value from here, the starting note, and the octave note, we're going to put it together and then we're going to use this and um, we will uh, use it for, for what we want to transpose each and every single individual note from the, from the chord array. Let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna, gonna delete this first and let's go back down into our, where are we? Display chord info. So what I said, first we want to get a string that represents both this and this. So we want, if I, if I have selected D4, I don't want them separately like, like this right here. I want D4 as a string. So how can we do that? Well, I will delete this for now. Mm, I will create another variable or a constant. Uh, I'm going to call it start note with octave. And I will set it equal to selected start note plus, just going to concatenate these two strings, selected octave. And just to check if it works. And by the way, I got these uh, from up here. That's what we set. Every time we uh, we change this, we will set those variables. Select a start note and select an octave. Uh, so let's try and console lock that. Uh, I'll probably get a an error right now. Yes, we get not a number. And that's because we haven't yet set these to, to anything. They, um, they start with, uh, C and one because that is the first thing in our, uh, that's the first one here, C and one. That's what we create down here. That's the, the first one in the octave selector. So they don't yet have a number. So if you try to add them, um, before you have selected anything, if I select something here now, 
and I click a button, then we'll get it. Then we'll get the note name and the octave. So we should probably give them a value up, up here and we know it's already C, so I might as well just set this equal to uh, C. And the selected octave is, first one is one. So I'm gonna set that equal to one. Um, I'm just gonna use a string. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna click on one of them and I get C1 every time if I click on this. If I change the octave to five, I'll get that. So that's pretty cool. Let's go back down to our display chord info. Um, so we're going to use that one. This is what we're going to transpose every single note in the chord by, or every single interval in the chord. So to do that, we need the transpose method that we played around with before. And now that we already have the start note with the octave, we can, um, we can do what we want to do right here. I'm going to make a, a variable, I will call it chord notes. And this is where we will store the specific chord notes that we're getting every time we click the button. That should be equal to, we have the chord intervals up here. So that is also what we're displaying right up here. So I'm going to map over that and do something to each individual um, interval here. So I'm going to type chord intervals and then I'm going to map that and I want the value. So that's every single interval and let's do something to it right here. So I will return transpose and I will pass it the start note with octave. And I will then pass it, I want to transpose it by, by the value that we passed in. I'm gonna save that. And then let's try and console lock the chord notes. And it works. It looks like it works. Um, I'm gonna click this. I get the notes for a sus seven sus four with the C starting note in the first octave. Let's try and change this to let's say F in the second octave. We still have these things logging. Maybe I should remove that. But let's try and get a major seven sharp five. So we get F two, A two, C sharp three, and E three. Let's move it up a little bit. Let's uh, move it up to an, a B flat and like try this one out. And you can see it starts on the B flat two as we select it up here. And uh, it goes all the way up to a G flat four. So voila, it works. We are using the transpose method from tonal JS and uh, we're mapping through all of the different uh, these right here. But now we want to display that information up here. And that's that's pretty simple. We just need to, I cannot remember if we already grabbed that one up here. It's intervals in court, we did not. So let's do that now. Let's call it notes in court. And then let's grab query selector. And let's see what it's called here. It's called notes in court. I'm gonna grab that and put it right here. And then we are going to do the same as we did before, just with instead of the intervals, we're gonna do it to the chord. So here we will set the inner text. to the chord notes and we are going to join them 
with a dash. And it works. So now we have everything hooked up. Um, you can change here, you can select whatever you want, and you will get the, hopefully the correct data. So now we're almost there, but it would be fun if we could add some sound to it. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. We are going to create or start creating a little sound engine that you can pass some data into, and it will then play the selected chords using a new library that we haven't worked with yet called howler.js so see you in the next video